Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Cobb with ZL Performance, and today we're going to be talking about pain and why protocols often don't work. If you are new to Z Health, we're a brain-based training company, and that's really what this whole blog is about. <laughs> is about how brain-based training is supposed to work. For 20 plus years, we have been discussing the idea that everyone who is in pain has a different neurosignature. Basically what that means is that over many years of looking at brains, we know that pain is typically associated with activity in different areas, but it's weighted differently in different people. Now, all of that was theoretical until recently. There was a study that was just published. It's a fascinating study because what they did is they took 20 people with chronic low back pain and 20 people who had chronic migraines, but then they made an important choice. What they did is they tracked them over time because often when we do brain scans on people with pain, we look at their brain scan after only one scan. But instead what they did is they took this group and they did functional MRIs over a period of months watching what happened in each person's brain as their pain went up and went down, because that's generally the process that occurs during chronic pain situations. Now, what they found was incredibly fascinating, but it confirms what we have been discussing. What they saw was that over time, every person had an individual neurosignature for pain. In some cases, that meant that almost no activity was noticed in areas that are commonly associated with this pain neuromatrix in the brain. Other people, almost all those areas lit up. Now, why this is super important to understand is that most of medicine, most of rehabilitation, most of training is built around, here's a protocol for solving X. Let's say you have carpal tunnel syndrome or tennis elbow, or you're doing a ACL rehabilitation, etc. Now, protocols exist as a starting point and they are useful, but they are not enough in some cases to really begin to impact areas of the brain that are being affected in some people, particularly in chronic pain situations. So a brain-based practitioner's job is to do lots of testing, to do lots of experimenting, to say, hey, if we provide this type of stimulus, this type of exercise, how do you respond to that. Because whenever we are discussing dealing with pain, we need to be very careful of saying with certainty that something will always help. It would be great if that was how things happened in the real world, but if that was the real world, there would be one solution for every problem and medicine and rehabilitation and training would be way easier. So if you're interested, we're going to actually include some shots of that paper so you can go read it. And more importantly, look at the pictures because the researchers did something incredibly cool. They actually put in pictures of the brains of each patient uh, that was involved in the study so that you can visually see that, hey, this person has chronic migraines, this one does, and their brains look nothing alike. That is a huge jump forward in pain research and hopefully is a huge jump forward in how the general world begins to understand why we need to look at the brains and people who are having uh, chronic pain issues and really begin to assess them on an individual and personal level. What do you do with this information? Well, the most important thing is don't stop trying. If you've tried several protocols for headache, low back pain, tennis elbow, and they didn't work, it doesn't mean that you're permanently broken. It just means that you may need to work with an expert or someone who understands this information that we're talking about so that things can be more personalized for what's happening in your brain. All right, hope you found this interesting. We will be back soon.